It's been the coldest winter in Kabul for more than a decade. It's a struggle to keep homes clean and warm. Now the snow's thawing, giving way to mud. When I lived here under the Taliban, life was also harsh. The Taliban believed the people of Kabul were ungodly, police them with particular vehemence. I've come to an average sort of neighborhood to canvas opinion. It's ethnically mixed. Pashtuns and Tajiks live here. One man who lived through the Taliban era is the local baker, Mohammed Bashar. From the point of view of security, the Taliban were good, really. Apart from the vice and virtue police, they were fine. The bribery is really bad now. And as for security, you can't reach home if you have money on you. Your family, your property are all in danger. I'm used to hearing such comments from the Taliban's old heartland, the Pashtun tribal belt of the south and east. It's a shock to hear this from a Persian-speaking Kabuli. Even so, Mohammed Bashar says he wants the NATO forces to stay. Without them, he says, there would be a return to civil war. Outside the bakers, a crowd has gathered, and two complaints keep getting repeated. Corruption and the lack of jobs. This man's a barber and has many children to support. The Taliban came and broke their promises and messed everything up. And we're seeing the same thing again. Everyone who gets into power in this country just fills their pockets and leaves. Driving back into the city centre, I experience the bribery that Afghans say is now the norm. We get stopped by a traffic policeman and I manage to catch the end of the exchange on my camera. In front of me, a foreigner, he's taken a bribe. 300 Afghanis, the equivalent of three pounds. And what's the average wage for labouring? 150 per day. So it's two days wages he's, you've just paid? Yeah. Many things have changed for the better since 2001. These Shia Muslim flags and processions would have been unthinkable under the Taliban. Shias were banned from publicly marking one of their holiest days, although privately, these rituals always went on. Of all Afghans, it's the Shias who should look back at the Taliban with the most horror. They suffered a series of civilian massacres, burnt villages, a scorched earth policy which was overseen by the man now leading the Taliban insurgency, Mullah Dadullah. But in the cold light of day, even here, there are some good words for the old Taliban government. These days they suck your blood. Even governors take bribes just for doing something illegal. The Taliban beat women and there were restrictions. But at least there was no bribery. But in this Shia neighborhood, not everyone is so browbeaten. If the Taliban come back, we'll fight them. They only want power for themselves, no one else. Yes, there was stability under them, but it was the stability of oppression. The people were forced to keep silent. But this is a rare voice. On the Kabul streets, at the heart of the aid industry and the government, I've mainly encountered alienation and despair. So is the project failing? The United Nations oversaw the transition from Taliban to democratic government, and it still plays a key role. There are some ministries that are pretty corruption free. We are confident of that. In fact, of 25 ministries in the country, uh, we would say six or seven are quite effective, delivering across the board and not major sources of corruption. But others have a lot of catching up to do. And the Ministry of Interior, the police, is one of the biggest concerns. Afghans have never expected much from the state. But talk of human rights, aid and democracy after 2001 did raise expectations. How people feel on the streets of the capital is just as important as how they feel in the centres of insurgency in the south, where the British are fighting. From what I've heard in Kabul, George Bush and Tony Blair should be worried.